Hello, my fellow pen people, and how are you doing YouTube? This is a very special review. It is the pen that everybody loves to hate. Mont Blanc, the Meisterstück. It means masterpiece. Before we get to the pen, let us discuss a little bit about some of the history behind Mont Blanc. It was established in 1908, okay, by Klaus Johannes Voss, the banker Alfred Nehemias, and the engineer August Ibernstein. And it was actually founded as a Simplo Filler Pen Company. In 1910, the name became Mont Blanc, which basically means the Peak Mountain in uh, Switzerland. Uh, I forget how tall it is. It's like 48 something. Anyway. What happened in 1977, the company was taken over by uh, Dunhill, which is an English company. And in the 80s, it was taken over by the uh, Richmond Group in either the late 80s, like 88-ish, 89, 90 in that range. And then, um, I think actually they took it over by 91. After that, the company, actually after 1977, the company started making just upmarket pens. After 91, it got even worse. Um, the company whose original intention was to make upscale pens, but not super high-end, super exotic, super luxurious items. It wasn't the original intention. They were very good tools, and they were very fine tools. Over time, the tools kind of gotten a little bit better, but the prices have skyrocketed. And that's why everybody loves to hate Mont Blanc. There's a reason for that. Barriers to entry, jealousy, envy, and the fact they have issues. And they're really designed almost like a Porsche 911. They're designed for somebody that really knows what they're doing. They're not a first pen. They're not a second pen. I don't even recommend it as a fifth or sixth pen. They're somebody that really understands a fountain pen and understands its idiosyncrasies and understands why they grind them the way they do and how they grind them the way they do. It can actually appreciate what they have done in their history and maintain it properly and have a proper loop to make sure the tines are adjusted correctly so they don't get frustrated with it and then put it in a drawer forever. And that's who a Mont Blanc fountain pen really is designed for, the eccentric person that wants something special. They can appreciate quality and um, acquired it somehow, some way. Now, in the secondary market, they are more reasonable. Or if they are a gift, like in the case of mine, I got a boatload of cash and for my birthday from family members, and I use that to purchase my pen. Would I spend $550 on the pen myself? No. But if I had the means, it would be a different story. I'm at a different level. You know, I'm just getting started in my endeavor in my insurance business thing I'm trying to start, and We'll see where that leads. Um, so, anyway, back to the pen. This is the case that comes in. Okay? Now, when I originally got this pen, I admit I didn't know what I was doing. Okay? I got a fine nib. It happens. You know it's perfect. It didn't write great. I sent it back. And um, they give you this nice little booklet that comes with it with your warranty, some information about Mont Blanc and all that good stuff. I sent it back and I got my nib exchanged. Now Mont Blanc has a lot of rules. They only have a two-year warranty. Okay? And within the first six weeks of ownership, if you do not like your nib, you can take it back to the Mont Blanc store and have that nib replaced. And they'll do it free of charge. And it will take you about six weeks to four weeks, depending on whether the nib is in stock or not, or whether they have to import the nib from Hamburg, Germany. And if that is the case, you'll have to wait a little longer. But let's say about four weeks to six weeks in that range. Okay? They used to have an unlimited lifetime warranty. Okay? You could have changed the nib any time you wanted. This was back right after World War II uh, or before World War II when it was a different type of company. Now it's only a two year um, warranty. Six week period where you can replace your nib. The box. 
This is my Mont Blanc Meister stuff. Platinum Classic. And it's a fantastic pen. It is one of the best pens I own. But we'll get there. Then has some idiosyncrasies. I recommend anybody getting into one of these to get a broad nib, not a fine, and especially not the medium. The mediums are going to have issues. The good part about Mont Blanc is consistency. They are all ground the same way at the factory. They all come out the same way. They are all checked at the factory. Not a lot of pen companies do that anymore. So you are paying extra for that privilege, for the fact that they actually grind them consistently. Now, the nibs are ground almost like a stubbish type of nib. They're not as forgiving as a very smooth nib, let's say from a Faber-Castell, which are hand polished by the way, um, but they are very consistent in a machine polish technique. And they have a little bit of a break-in period because they are machine polished. I say about 10 to 20 lines of writing and it'll start breaking in and be nice. But if you're going to buy one of these things, please, please make sure that you have a loop, a high quality jeweler's loop. This is one from Radio Shack. I dropped it. I don't care. It's a $5 loop. But this is a good loop. This is from Richard Binder from Binder Pence. Okay, this is, this triplet is designed for jewelers. It was a $30 loop. Get one of these. Because it has higher quality glass and you can see what's going on. Reason for that is, even though they check them all from the factory, you never know who handled them. You never know if someone was monkeying them at the store. When I got my replacement nib, one of the tines was slightly off and I had to do some micro adjustments and just do a little couple tweaks and it wrote beautifully. Okay? Now, they write smooth, they write good if you get the bigger nibs. If you get those finer nibs, they're not going to be quite as nice if you don't know how to hold it correctly because it's almost ground like a stub nib. Okay? It's a little bit different. Now, they are still smoother than a stub nib, but you're going to have to understand that if you don't apply any pressure with a broad nib, you hold it correctly, it will write effortlessly, it will write smooth as butter and on silk, okay? Once it's properly broken in after a couple lines. After that period, when you start applying a little bit of pressure, the pen transforms, okay? The nib itself becomes a little sharper. You start seeing a little bit more line variation. It's like when you're taking a Porsche 911, it doesn't like, go, you can go slow and it's like any other car. But when you start pushing it and compressing the springs, hitting the gas, hitting the brakes, warming it up, then it becomes almost like a race car. Because this is a factory tuned nib that's designed to have the ability to appeal to a high-end customer, a low-end customer, and an everyday person, layman. Because of that, there's challenges in the way it's ground, challenges and some compromises, that when you start pushing it, all those compromises go away and it starts becoming a higher end nib. But, you have to get used to it. It's not going to be as smooth as you're used to, but it's not going to be scratchy. It's just going to give you the feedback that you need, kind of like a slalom skier. Once you hit that edge on your skis and you're going into a turn and you lean, you're going to catch the edge and go. Just like exactly the same idea the way these are ground. And that's why they are amazing and beautiful.